Hi. My name is Julian, and today with my friend Jerome, we're going to, tell, to talk about tails, security, maintainability, and usability. Encore un coup. So, um, we are both French speakers. And we are going to try to do this talk in English because some friends of ours are in the room and they don't speak French at all. So bear with us. Um, as I say, my name is Julian. I'm working on Radar 2. I'm working for a small company called NBS System. And you can find my website right there. Hello. So I'm Jerome. I'm working on uh, ADW Cleaner, a small security tool. I'm also a student and uh, my blog is... Uh, so, uh, both of us, we are part of Nos Onions, which is a small association uh, which is operating some exit nodes for uh, Tor. So, we are about uh, 2 or 3 percent of the total Tor exit capacity. Tails, uh, what is it? The name is the Amnesic uh, Incognito Live System. So it's an old project. It's born in 2009. And it's a live operating system which uh, aims to preserve some anonymity and privacy for its users. So how does it work? It's mainly related to Tor. So every internet connection is uh, proxified through Tor and uh, nothing else can, can use the, the classical connection. Uh, when you remove, when you stop to use Tails, there's no trace on the computer, unless you say you want to, to leave some trace. It's uh, very usable, so every cryptographic tools are made to be usable by everyone, so you can uh, encrypt your email, encrypt your uh, unstart messagery, on the, your files and all stuff like that. So by default, it's secure. All the default options and all the default settings are, are secure by default and they are very usable. So no, the real question is, yeah, that's great, but does it work? Yeah, the NSA say that it adds several computer network exploitation misery to the equation. And um, they <laughs> they, tell, they talk about taste like a uh, comsec mechanism advocated by extremists on extremist forums. So I guess we are both extremists. And uh, how do we know this kind of stuff? That's because a famous Tails user gave this document to some journalist and to us. His name is called um, Edward Snowden, something like that. Maybe you know about him. So uh, Tails. It's a very active project. There is a major uh, release every few weeks, so almost every six weeks. There's a lot of commits by uh, several users. So there are more and more contributors, but uh, everyone is welcome. Uh, the very core developers are want to be to stay anonymous and, but they are very friendly and very accessible if you want to, to talk to them. And there's a lot of users, but very a lot. So with about seventeen thousand uh, boots per day. So it's a huge number and it's very interesting to, to manage. Okay, so this is Tails and this is the nice logo and it that's smiling USB key because at first time I didn't know what it was. So let's talk about maintainability, usability, and security in the context of Tails. So about maintainability, uh, does anyone remember the name of any of those Linux distributions? Yeah, we don't either, because they are all dead, and they lasted top one year or two years, and now they are completely dead. So maintainability really matters. Um, of course, uh, you can make a a very nice software and a very efficient software, but if uh, no one can use it because it's too hard and it's too complicated, uh, nobody will use it. And they will use something else and probably something which is less, less efficient and less secure. 
Also, of course, security matters when you come to anonymity. Um, if you don't blend in a crow, you're a target and you really appear. But if you manage to blend the attacker to attack the whole crowd, so this is really more complex for them. Also, I know that everyone here is no better than the tail developer and is using some cube Gen 2 Arden or OpenBSD or something like that. But the people that you are sending emails to, they don't use this kind of stuff and they get pwned. So it, collectivity really matters. Your email recipient has used something secure. So let's talk about maintainability. Uh, as I said previously, the people behind Tails are a really small team. The core dev are maybe less than 10 people. And there are a lot, 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 lot of stuff to get down. So contributors are welcome and contributions are really appreciated. Um, this is the motto of the Tails team. The less we do, the better we live. So there are some hard relationship with upstream. Like for example, you have to talk to the right people to get them involved in the project, to find skilled people because not everyone is a, I don't know, an expert in kernel security, for example. So this is a lot of work. And you have to keep them interested. You have to give them interesting tasks to do. You have to reward them. This takes a lot of time to do social work of upstream contributions. And also, of course, there are technical work like backports because tail is based on Debian stable. This is less work. So, and the goal is to upstream as much as possible to keep the delta as small as possible. So, the less we do, the better we live. For example, the tail project contributed to Appamore, Thunderbird, Firefox, Puppet, Mumble, Tor, Debian, whatever. So, a lot of work is upstream to reduce the delta. Um, this is the funny part. Uh, we've got a test suit, but Tails is a live CD, so it's really complex. We're using Cucumber for behavior-driven development, like hipsters, CQD for OU testing, and KVM for nested virtualization. We're running VM inside VM inside VM for the test suit, so that's really fun. We're using Jenkins on every push on the master branch, or I think on every branch, actually. Yeah, on every branch, every push, Jenkins run the whole test suit. And a part of the test suit is testing tails like it's a black box. So emulating a real user with mouse clicks, taking screenshots, and then diffing the screenshots. So it takes three hours to run on a really heavy machine. And for the release, there are some stuff that you cannot really test in an automatic fashion. And we're using some nice people to help us test the release. We're also using puppets. I don't know if everyone is aware about what it is. It to uh, automate deployments. And it's really great because the infrastructure of the Tails project is treated like as it was code. So you don't need privileges or internet connection to contribute. You just pawn some VM, write your manifest, push it with Puppet, and see how it works. And so you can contribute to Tails in the sysadmin team without having any rights. It's easy to maintain, to redeploy, like a machine crash. You don't care. You just fire Puppet, and we'll spawn you in infrastructure somewhere else. And also we have conversions. That's a really neat feature from Puppet. And also we can share and borrow Puppet manifests so we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time we want to deploy another service. Um, we publish everything. So we've got an open bug tracker when you can see what is wrong with Tails, what we want to do, where we want to do, and when. We've got monthly meeting on XMPP and a public development channel and a support channel on XMPP. And every single part of the source code, the documentation, everything is in Git repository and is completely public. So uh, let's talk about usability. Because uh, you can make a, a great tool, like I said, but if no one can use it, it's useless. So. Uh, uh, as uh, Julian said, Tails is based on Debian. So we used every trans translation string from Debian. So the translation level is uh, quite the same as Debian. We also push a lot of work upstream. Um, yeah, so we have a huge documentation on everything is translated in a lot of language. So here are a few, a few of them. And for that, we use uh, PoEdit. 
So uh, everything is in a Git repository, and everyone can uh, use the file, translate with PO edit, uh, compile everything, check if the documentation is is correct, make the fix if uh, if needed, and then uh, push. Up. So it's easy. You can add a different language quite easily. So it makes the work uh, efficient and it works. But uh, to use Tails, you need to install it and it may not be quite easy. Especially uh, if you are on Windows, if you need some encrypted partition, it can be very, uh, a nightmare. So for that, uh, to make the, the life easier for every user, there's a, an installer, a magical installer. It makes everything easy. And as you can see, it's a, a simple JV. Uh, you have three buttons. You can choose uh, which option uh, is better for you. So you can use uh, already existing uh, Tails USB key. You copy it and you can have a, a second one. You can upgrade it, you can, but everything is easy. You just have to click on a button, plug your key, and it's done. But, um, okay, you, you can install it, but you also have to get some updates, and it's a, a tricky part because Tails is huge. At the beginning, it was, uh, it was uh, the size of a CD. So it was, uh, you, you can install it on a, on a CD and plug it, but now it's almost one gigabyte. So it's too, too, too heavy for, for a CD. So you, can, you can't also download it each time because one gigabyte is very, very important and not everyone has a fiber powered internet connection. So a solution is to make incremental upgrades. Uh, it's also a tricky part because to make it quite secure, it's difficult. So for that, we use TUF, the Agrot framework, which is really well specified and it explains almost everything you have to take care of. So to, to make your belt secure, we also use uh, Tandy, which is used for the, the Tor Brothers upgrades. So we, we use the, the same stuff that the, the job project does. And all of that brings an interesting uh, threat model and challenge because you have to take care of uh, a lot of stuff like METM or things like that. And you, it's really a, a critical part because if you share to your users some, um, some pulled updates, it won't work and it's yeah, so it's difficult to, to, to share your results some upgrades. So it's really well specified, really well documented, and it works. And on the, the same topic, uh, cryptography is hard. If you try to explain how to use GPG to some non-technical uh, people, uh, you can try, it's hard. And it's fun to, to look at them uh, trying to use GPG. So to, to fix that, we developed an open GPG applet, which is a really simple software to use GPG uh, very easily. So like, this, like the, for the installer before, you have to click on several buttons, and it's quite easy, and it works also. So everyone can use it, even if you don't know how GPG works, it works. And uh, cryptography is also made to verify each update you made. So when you, when Tails auto-updates itself, it checks uh, if the downloaded uh, files are correct, are signed, and are the, the files you expect to install and to apply to make the, the updates. So cryptography is very at every level of the, the live system. And uh, finally, for the instant messaging in uh, Pidgin, OTR is activated by default. So uh, when you begin a uh, conversation with your contacts, 
uh, the um, handshake is made is uh, automatically beginning at, at the, the beginning of the conversation, and it's fully transparent. So every user will use OTR, and even if they don't know once again how it works, they will use it. So it's by default, and it's made the, their life easier. So um, finally, if your user can't use your software, it's, uh, it's, it's useless. So the GUI part on the UX testing is very important. So for that, uh, we use real users, we give them objectives, and we watch where they are blocking. So for example, uh, try to send uh, uncruited email, and we, we look at how they do that. We look at how they, 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 they block and what they find difficult to do that. And then we try to fix with uh, the UX team and the designer teams. And they, they try to look at solutions and we, we fix that. But it's really a, a hard job and it's very hard. Uh, once again, uh, like I spoke for the translation, everything is documented. So uh, how to use tails, how is it developed, how the updates uh, are done, how you can contribute to it, everything is documented. Uh, every, every time that uh, someone is pushing some uh, new feature or a uh, new code, you need to bring the documentation with the, 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 this new feature. It's mandatory. You, you can't push a new thing without a documentation. So it's both for developers and both for users. Everyone needs a documentation. And for the accessibility, uh, because it's uh, also on the same topic, we use GNOME uh, because it's very well documented and uh, they have a very good guidelines for how to, to make your interface usable by everyone even by non-skilled non people. So it's really important. Um, we also use some drivers, for example, for your uh, Wi-Fi card, because if you don't have Wi-Fi on your uh, laptop, you won't use the, this live system, because if you don't have any internet connection, you will don't find it interesting and you won't use it. So we use some drivers and sometimes some proprietary uh, blobs for uh, this, this kind of things. And uh, everyone is following the new specification, so we do one thing, but we do it well. It's really important and it makes the, the life easier. But once again, it's a very hard job and it's very difficult to do it well. Um, for the persistence, so when you use tails, you can uh, choose whether or not to, to save some files on the USB key or on the SD card, and this file will be encrypted. And uh, when you boot again tails, you can uh, work on these files again, and it will, it will work. Um, so to do that, we use loots, we loot uh, DMCraft, H4, um, so every classical tools. But once again, it's really hard to make them usable. Uh, if you try to make uh, some user using uh, loops, you can try, but like JPG, it will be very complicated. So once again, we make this very usable with a, a few buttons. You click on it, and it works. So well. for example, here, uh, you have the test waiter. And, uh, in the same philosophy, you have a, a few buttons to, to, to fix and to adapt the, the settings you want. And um, so it's really usable. But uh, even if we do as much as we can to make all of that usable, we have a lot of users and a lot of different users. So to make the feedbacks easier, we have whisperbacks which is a, a small applet to report some bugs, and it's very easy. So you report a bug, it sends an email, and you can be contacted back and uh, trying to fix that. 
We also have uh, people who are always responding for emails. The, if you have, uh, if you are stuck in tails, you can send an email and someone will answer back to, to help you. You have also the mailing lists, uh, IRC, it's MPV. And uh, everyone, every time you will find someone to, to help you in one of those uh, channels. And we have a, a lot of users, like we saw with the figure at the beginning, but these users are not, um, are really different, so it's really hard to make a, a good support for them. For example, we, we have users that are gamers, so they ask some stuff like that, okay, why not? But we have also users that know better than everyone. Okay. We have also in the same kind of stuff. Well, and we have users that want to play shitty videos. Well, no. And uh, well, fancy things. Why not? And also, of course, uh, some Android users, so some users that can be creative, and yeah, of course, <laughs> password as a service. So uh, it's really difficult to have a, a good support because we, we, our audience is uh, very large. So we don't speak to people who are already skilled and who already know how to do things. We speak about people who maybe don't know how to encrypt their emails or stuff like that, and we they, they need to to be able to use some tools which will allow them to 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 communicate uh, securely. So it's very hard, but we have a lot of people who are doing the support, and they are doing quite well. Also. Um, of course, in a lot of different Wi-Fi, you have to to log in on a, on a captive portals, for example, and it's very blockable because you can't use Tor directly. When you launch uh, Tails, you can't connect to the internet before Tails is uh, Tor is started. And when it's started, you can uh, launch your web browsers on a browser. Uh, normally, but when you have a captive portal, you are blocked, and you have to log in to the captive portal. So we have a separate web browser which is dedicated to this kind of stuff. It's red and it's made to to uh, to be um, very running, and we we want the users to know that it's not the the software they need to use because uh, it's only for a specific use case and for everything else they need to use the usable uh, web browsers which is through Tor. Um, so like I said for the Wi-Fi we use a binary blog. Uh, so they are uh, an amazing trolling source. Nearly every week someone is coming on the IRC and saying uh, why are you using some binary blogs? But if you don't have Wi-Fi on your laptops, you won't use it. So if, once again, it's uh, the usable mantra. So it's uh, a choice. Well. So um, this is the new video act. So let's talk a bit about security. And I have to pass the slide myself. OK. So as say in the first slides, the attackers are global, powerful, and smart, like the NSA, for example. And Tails users are global, powerless, and well, you've seen the quotes of, from the IRC. So, um, about persistence, persistence has been seen as a security feature. For example, you can persist the pseudo random number generation state to differentiate your entropy sources among Tails users. 
you can also persist Tor Cash for a quicker startup because when you boot Tails, Tor has to bootstrap. It's taking a lot of time and user don't like to wait. Also, persisting bridges is a cool topic, but it's really non trivial because um, maybe you don't know about bridges. It's the first hop into the Tor network. And for example, if you connect to a malicious first hop, you're screwed. So the, by default, you are persisting when you are using the Tor browser bundle, for example, always using the same bridge to get into Tor. And but do we want to do that in Tails too? Because this can be used to fingerprint a user. For example, if you go to another country and you're still using the same bridge, someone is monitoring the network and say, oh, this person is going to do the same bridge than the guy I'm monitoring. Maybe it's the same person. So we really need to think about this stuff. And if you have ideas, please come see me after. Also, we've got emergency release because people like to drop exploits because it's fun and not only shitty XSS. Um, most of the time we synchronize with upstream. For example, when there is a big bug in Firefox, Firefox send us, uh, send an email to the Tor browser people and they mail us back. So we can synchronize, we can take some day off to prepare a release, for example, and release are done in less than one day. This might seem a bit big, but this is a whole distribution, a whole ISO that is package, merge, test, publish on every single mirror. So it's quite impressive in my opinion. And the emergency releases are not really fun. Um, signature verification. Um, GPG is really, really odd. Like I'm quite sure that almost no one in this room knows how to download the key, establish a trespass, and then verify the ISO. It's really non straightforward. But the release are signed. Um, also, the question of key management is really fun because the, the Tails developer are several people, and we manage the key in an interesting way. Because if a Tails developer laptop is compromised, Tails is not compromised. That's fun. Um, did I mention that GPG is hard? Yes, I did. So we have a browser add-on. Um, you just install a Firefox add-on, and we'll download and verify the tails. This may seem a bit convoluted, but in fact, every single extension of the Firefox marketplace is signed by Mozilla. So it's a trust bootstrap process. Um, we have trust issue. We don't trust many people, but we welcome contributors. So it's a bit tricky because you come to contribute to Tails. Okay, that's great, but I really don't trust you to do release, for example. That's why we're trying to do a reproducible build. Um, for software, it's non-trivial. Maybe you heard about the Debian project trying to do it, but it's really hard. And we're trying to do it for all ISO. So it's really, really complex. But the positive side is that I can make a release. You don't have to trust me because you can download the sources, compile it yourself, and then compile the release. So you can release, do release, and we don't have to trust you. That's really great. Um, security, Appamore. Maybe some of you know Appamore. Um, it's a sandboxing stuff. Um, no one knows how to, you, you, how to write SC Linux rule, maybe except for Red Hat. Um, Tomoyo is not used, I guess. And every internet facing service or binary entails as an upper more profile. So it's completely sandbox. And for example, if you manage to pop a shell in my pigeon, this is not hard. You won't have access to my GPG key, for example. That's great. Um, and as usual, almost everything is pushed upstream. Almost everything, because for example, I don't want pigeon to access my audio card, for example, or my webcam. But maybe someone in Debian wants to, because we have different threat models. GR security, this is the running gag. Every time I say tail, someone say, yeah, what about GR security? This is important. Yeah, uh, no. More seriously, uh, at the beginning, there were no GR security package in Debian, and then, yeah, the Tails Developer Kernel developer, they're trying to build an ISO. This is hard enough. You don't need them to learn how to package kernel because Debian patched the kernel and then GR Security patched the kernel. It's really complex. I know there is a cool guy named Korsak, a French guy, that is maintaining a GR Security package in Debian. That's great. 
but unfortunately it tells use AUFS for persistence and general security doesn't like AUFS. So yeah, but Tails is moving to overlay phase. That's great, but Appamod doesn't like overlay phase. Nor told IUK, nor use the live boot. So maybe we can just fix your security. Yeah, no, this is not going to happen. So that's why we don't have GS security for now. But if you'd like to help, I'd be happy to help you to help us. Um, everyone is using Windows, for example, when you go to a library or, I don't know, some cyber cafe or thing like that. And when you use tails, you are a target because you don't blend in the crow. That's why we have the nice Windows store. It's really great. It's not available anymore, but it might come back at some point. And it's, I think it's really fun and impressive because it really looks like you're using Windows instead of Tails. Um, we also have some fancy in-house tools that cannot really be upstream, but we try to make them public so everyone can use them. For example, um, you've got your USB key plugged into your computer and the attacker is breaking the door and say, uh, hands on your head, uh, this is the police, blah, blah, blah. You just have to unplug the key and the memory from Tails will erase itself. Like you would boot another kernel that will completely write completely random value into the RAM. So this will prevent cold um, memory dump attacks, for example. That's a fun feature. As I said previously, when you remove the key, tail shut down. That's fun because you can have a wrist, a uh, band around your wrist, and just type to a laptop, and when someone passes and tries to steal your laptop, the USB key will be disconnected, and your laptop will shut down. Uh, we've got the metadata anonymization toolkit. You give it some photos or some document, and it will remove every single metadata. That's a great feature. We've got max proofing, like I think iPhone are doing that. So when you connect to a network, it will take a fake MAC address. So when you come back to the network, you will get another one, and you won't be traceable in this network. Um, in the greeter, you can completely disable the network if you don't plan to use it. So no Wi-Fi, no Ethernet, thing like that. For a gap network, an air gap laptop, it can be really useful. And also a lot of other goodies, but we are out of time. Sorry. So this is already the conclusion of the talk. Um, everyone can use Tails. This is the ultimate goal, as said in the first slide. You can use Gentoo, you can use OpenBSD, CubeOS, or whatever you want. But in the end, what matters is that the other people that you are communicating with are using something secure. For example, I don't know, your grandmother, grandfather, maybe your parents or your friend that aren't spending their whole day in front of their computer. Those are the target of Tails, the public that we are aiming for. Um, Tails is seven years old and we're still alive. That's really great. Not a lot of software maintained for this long and especially not big as Tails. Um, anonymity and amnesia are actually security feature because when you look like everyone else, you're not a target anymore. The world code is a target, and no one will burn an exploit for every single Tails user just to catch one person. So uh, this is the real conclusion. We've got security, maintainability, and usability. You don't have to choose. Thank you very much for bearing our completely broken English. And um, if you have some questions, we'll be happy to answer them. But Please. Thank you very much. Do we have some questions? Yes, we have one over there. Um, in the beginning of the of your slides, you had a number. Uh, how many times Tails is booted a day? Yeah. How is this number calculated? I was expecting these questions. <laughs> um, actually, we say that we've got incremental updates. So when you boot Tails, it will check using Tor, of course, if there is a new version available for Tails, and we just count these requests.
That's great. There is no question. So I guess we said everything. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.